This the marketing podcast is brought to you by Acorn 30. Wait, that's our company. Right. Although some people think we're a bit nuts, we work with businesses to help them grow into mighty oaks through creative campaigns, amazing websites, and funky branding. Check us out at acorn30.com. On this episode, creating a product to showcase your company, the worst song in the world, a unique campaign for advertising, and guilt-free, smoke-free advertising. Creativity Cells. Applying the right creative at the right time is the recipe for great marketing. The Marketing Podcast looks at marketing news and finds the secret ingredients that make great marketing. Hi. Welcome to the Marketing Podcast. I'm Heather Watson. And I'm Brendan Quigley. How you doing, Brendan? Excellent. Episode 31. Ooh. If I had fireworks, I would have set them off behind me. Yeah. 31 weeks of doing this routinely. We have improved the last 31 weeks of your life beyond measure. Well. Guaranteed. Thank you for all of those of you who are listening to us <laughs> so far. And uh, we're having fun doing this, so hopefully you guys are enjoying it too. Today's going to be a fun episode. We're talking ab- about advertising, advertising campaigns, um, some kind of cool picks that we've, we've dug into. Do you want to jump in? Let's do this. Come on a journey with us today, folks. The journey of advertising. So our first article today is out of Strategy, uh, Strategy Online, and it's about a Toronto-based uh, marketing agency, actually. So this is uh, uh, an agency called Bob's Your Uncle in Toronto, and they are working with a charity called Second Harvest. Now, Second Harvest is uh, basically all about uh, reducing food waste or taking food waste and ensuring that people have food, access to that food, and re, not repurposing it, but um, it's about that whole sustainability movement. So the agency themselves has, uh, they consider themselves a brand that does marketing for thoughtful food and beverage brands, and they've created their own product which is a beer called... If you're going to create a product. Right. Exactly. Um, So the beer is called Bean a Slice. Uh, And it's launching officially at Thanksgiving of this year. So it hasn't come out yet, but they're starting to do a little bit of um, pre-work around it because we know kind of coming up into the summer months, everybody loves patios and bars and all that jazz, uh, beer season, so to speak, beer festivals. And the beer itself supports Second Harvest's mission to reduce food waste while building its own brand affinity. So the beer is made entirely from old bread that would usually get thrown out. Um, And then the funds from the beer sales go directly to Second Harvest. So it's all around that circular economy. Interesting. Yeah. And this is more of like a... uh, Not experiment, but like an opportunity for them to showcase their creative agency? Yeah, so the CEO for the agency has has said just that, right? If you want to own a category, and again, their category is thoughtful food and beverage brands. So if you want to own a category, create your own. And that's what they're trying to do in the space. So it allows them, of course, to flex their creative muscle in the space that they want to work in. Um, They're going to be doing digital ads and out of home Advertising. That was going to be my next question. Like, how are they advertising? How are they doing that? Yeah. Really capitalizing on that downtown Toronto demographic. And there's also going to be merchandise to support the campaign shirts and things like that. Uh, And they're in the process of uh, negotiating shelf placement within the LCBO with kind of the microbrewery kind of thing. And, um, And it's going to be served in downtown restaurants, downtown Toronto, restaurants and bars. So I think that's kind of a neat a neat way for an agency to showcase their talent and uh, back and to charity support a charity, which, which is a good model, no matter which way you look at it. I know that there's lo- local breweries here that do that, where one of their beers will be a portion of the sales will go to a local charity. 
Yeah, and I know, I mean, this is that whole kind of culture of social enterprise, right? Where, uh, you know, similarly, we see, you know, buy this T-shirt and sales from this T-shirt. You know, yeah. sales from all of our other T-shirts go into our pocket, but sales from this particular T-shirt supports a particular charity that we have an affinity to that makes sense, right? So this is really where the question comes for for our listeners and for us to discuss, you know, where is that point of that social enterprise for business because any business can do it. Oftentimes we work with clients who are looking at, you know, yes, from a marketing standpoint, but typically they are supporting causes in their community because, you know, well, we're supporting the little league, uh, little league hockey team because my kid plays on that. So if I can throw them $200 to buy a shirt, we talked about that kind of marketing before. Yeah, right. Uh, then that's good, but does it make sense? Does it fit with the whole picture of what they're trying to create as a brand? I, I think on many levels, it's an excellent way to put your brand organically in front of your community. Right. Like, like and, and I don't think you can go into it expecting a ROI, so a return on investment, um, that's like super measurable. Um, it'll definitely be measurable, but it might not be instant. So it's like it's the 10 years of supporting that little league uh, with that $200, n- nothing at all, right? Like virtually compared to the ad spend you might do on, on Google or Facebook, that small change. Right. Um, but that 10 years of sustained support for the community because you want to support your community, that or a charity, that's what starts to get you some, um, you know, authentic you're the go-to for that service, that product, that right. thing. You are a local business. You are a, and I think that's worth way more than everything else. So it's it's kind of neat to see like what a good way for this agency to create their own product, to flex their creative muscles, but then also to give back. I, I think it will do that if they maintain over time. Right. And it's also like, it, again, it depends on what your goal is because, yes, you're flexing your creative muscle as an agency, but they're also getting real time data about how people are interacting with yep. a brand in the space that they're working in. So so they can take that learned knowledge and apply it to other client files that they're working on um, that are paid client files. Right. So so not only as an agency, they're showing off in a good way, like showcasing their talent but they're able to glean information that they can then apply to other projects. And and that's where I think it's it's interesting. It's beyond at that point, you know, sponsoring your kids little league team or whatever the case may be, even for long game in doing that. This is really an opportunity for them to play in the space that they want to work in. And uh, and I think that as businesses there are opportunities to do that. There's lots of opportunities to do that and and get that real-time data where your staff are learning and growing and developing their skills, showcasing their skills and talent while being able to give back. I mean, we have often sponsored uh, entrepreneurial type challenges, contests where we're donating a portion of um, development of an app or a website or something like that. So, you know, in doing that, we're we're getting networking value because we're working with those entrepreneur businesses that are, you know, part of those programs. We're also getting the showcase value in the community that we want to work in. Um, and then we're getting that kind of back end growth knowledge, uh, you know, trying to push the limits on what we're doing to showcase some of our, our work. Right. Yeah. And, and it's funny you say that because I was making a presentation recently and I was able to use our examples locally. And right. it, was, it was really cool because I was right. like, here you go. Here, here are some, some companies we've worked with locally. Um, and I, I think that, you know, whenever you can do your thing locally, I think it just benefits your, your business. It's more Regardless tangible. of what it is. Yeah, because you're able to point to it. Someone says, hey, what, you know, you guys build websites, right? Yeah, we built that one and we built that one and, and, and it looks good. If you start saying, hey, we built this one in Montreal, it's like, oh, okay, great. Yeah. It's, harder, it's harder to... Harder to see, so yeah, they're this is faceless, awesome. They're faceless companies at that point in time. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay, moving on. We have the worst song in the world. Now we talked about very recently, Brendan, how you have a band. You're you're yes. in a band. You're in yes. a band, um, and that uh, we probably play this song. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I'd like to think of you a bit of a, a, a music aficionado fan as i am a fan of listening to lots of music this is a fun ad that happened um i'll let me back up this was an article that came out of ad week 
And uh, I'll summarize it here. Basically, a French retailer called Monopri, Monoprice, uh, single price. There's a millennial woman listening to a playlist, and she's walking home from the grocery store. Right? We do this. Walking down the road, carrying her bags. She gets home and on her walk puts her groceries down to change the track. Because she has to, because her hands are full. And the screen then pops up. Having your hands free changes everything. Shop at the store and get your groceries delivered. Right? So this is totally targeted to the millennial who's not driving, who is walking home with full hands from wherever. And this is first world problem that you know, right. I have to put all my stuff down in order to change the song. Um so based on the pretense that any non-car owning millennial who's had to suffer the indignity of buying their own food and carrying it home has had a similarly soul crushing moment of unavailable hands. And the song itself is a riot. Do you have it handy? Do you, well, I'm like looking. It's I in the handy. article. It's in the article. Okay. We're going to turn up the, the Well, And we'll also volume. link to it in the show. Here we go. We're probably going to get an ad or something. Yeah. God, yeah. we totally got an ad. Uh, oh, not cool. Should have cool. had a cued. Should have had a cued. Here we go. This, this sounds pretty good. It's the lyrics. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Might be the best music video. <laughs> it's it's got like a lot of kind of eighties and nineties feel to it. It uh, <laughs> the lyrics carry the joke. You know, the lead singer is rhyming off reasons why. Uh, uh, you know how the tune could have found its way onto the playlist. Like maybe it, maybe you're using your dad's account. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because clearly your father listens to terrible music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, some of the some of the script tells what's happening. So it's kind of funny because now the song, as the worst possible song in the world, is actually doing well as an ad. Um, here it says, it's a clash of cultures with good taste versus bad taste. And they wanted a band that would blend bands like Van Halen, Europe, and pop with new wave bands like Wham and Duran Duran. So totally out of the 80s. And uh, the song just makes it horrible and she can't stand it. And heaven forbid. I like this because they're not taking themselves seriously. Yeah. Like, like really, if you take yourself too seriously in your advertising, you, you're going to lose. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, uh, like watch commercials tend to be like, you know, the watch for the ages. And I'm just like, I don't have a watch. Yeah. You know, it's too intense, but you saw that the swatches did really well, like the colorful whatevers, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like take yourself less seriously like this. Like this. Well, and here's a deal, because oftentimes when we talk about like, what is your product? What is your service? What are the benefits to the consumer? So if I'm a grocery store that does delivery, what are the benefits to the consumer? This isn't what I would consider to be a benefit to the consumer. Right. Right. The benefit to the consumer is, oh, maybe it's that sustainable piece where I'm saving, you know, greenhouse gases by not driving back and forth. We have one person who's driving around town all day or, you know, save your time or whatever those benefits are. But they're like, no, we're saving you the indignity of having to be stuck listening to a horrible song because your hands are full, period. And and I mean, I'm not a millennial, but I have had my arms full of carrying things into the house and realize the door is locked. And it's like, oh, my God gosh yeah, yeah, right yeah. it's like because typically when your hands are full you've got things like you know you've got keys hooked on your fingers you've got all of the bags shoulders on your and arms bags yeah. and, and then you're like it's it's a maze just to try and put it down yeah. safely and uh you know that's crushing the chips yeah yeah so you wouldn't think of having grocery delivery as being you know this being one of the benefits but they've kind of made made a joke out of it and they're having fun, and it's and she's she's a great you know the look the still the, that you the got. look at her face is amazing. It's like what is this junk that I'm listening to? <laughs> so I bet you it's now trending on shop uh, Spotify. It could very well be. I bet you it is. It could very well be. It's now the like the song you sneak onto your friend's playlist. Yeah, uh, it should be. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so still sticking with Ad Week and still sticking with advertising. Um, this showed up not long ago as the ad of the day for uh, ad week that they often do and it's uh taking um 
having a hard time setting things up. This is an ad for Bevel Mirrors, which is a mirror manufacturing company that is owned by a man who is black or a man of color, as it says in the ad. And uh, as the founder, he has basically said all of his life, as a, as a young boy into into manhood has never seen a television ad that shows a black man shaving in the mirror. Interesting. Which is just those biases that we have, right? I get, I've just, I can't think of ads where men are shaving. I guess it's the razor ads. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, razor yeah, ads, yeah. yeah. And the guy like looks at the hair that's cut after, yeah, okay, I've got, I've got it now. I'm visualizing now. Yeah. So the whole ethos of their ad campaign is... I'm going to quote this because I think it's a pretty powerful statement. Man will be judged by his skin whether or not he's proud of it. I hope he's proud of it. Right? Is the line. So this is promoting their mirrors. And there are 10 men, one of which is the company founder who's, who's featured in it. And he says, the fact that I'm 33 years old now and my entire life I've not seen anyone like me shave, it's a problem. So... Here we have, you know, and and I'm not a dude and you have a beard. So this isn't a really good. Yeah, I barely you know, shave. <laughs> we, we can't come from this from a point of experience. But, um, you know, shaving for most men, as I understand, is a bit of a ritual. Like every guy does it differently. You know, usually there's that first moment where father is teaching son how to shave. Right. And, you know, and then son is adopting how to do that or adapting to that. Um, and, and it's very much part of your lives as guys. Um, and we have these conditional biases, like every ad that we see, you know, similarly, we've talked about, you know, women's menstrual products are always showing women skipping on a beach and blue liquid. Right. And why are we not, why are we falling into those norms? I would say the truth does sell in the sense that people don't want to be lied to. Right. You know, we've got that transparency in advertising, but it does seem like we've fallen into like stereotype truths we, instead of instead of the real thing. We expect to see things a certain way, right? Yeah. As buyers, yeah, um, and and even as people who are, you know, you expect your shopping cart to respond online in a particular way, like but we're it, conditioned. It's like the toothpaste ads. I now like expect a superimposed dentist on top of a large tooth where the brush comes back and forth it's like we get we get like in a rut yeah of creativity you know yeah so how do you push those boundaries whether it's men of color or women driving sports cars around a track talking about how a car can go from zero to 60 or you know a a guy who doesn't have a six-pack wearing a pair of calvin klein underwear right like that's you know, why are, why do we have these norms? Of, I always just didn't buy Calvin Klein because it's not for me. Sure. I don't have a six pack. The reality <laughs> is your wife is probably the one buying the underwear for you. And that's who it's, who it's targeted <laughs> towards. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, we need to we need to be different and overcome some of these age and physical obstacles that we seem to think we have. Society's changing. We're becoming you know, so much more acceptable and, and our norms shouldn't be our norms and, and we should continue to push those norms. And this one was getting highlighted because it is so very different and it just shows guys shaving. It's, yeah. not, not, it's, not in, it's not innovative in terms of what they're doing. It's the people that are in it that are innovative. What I think's good about the ad is that the founder... Uh, it's like a personal thing. It comes from a place yeah. of sincerity. It's not Absolutely. like they did a focus group and they were like, you know what? This demographic is going to buy our mirrors. So let's target them with an ad. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You know, and that's a really good point. It's got to be, it has to come from that place of sincerity um, and, and just wanting to do better and rise above and, and, and you need to be able to speak to it in that way. And, and this maybe gives businesses an idea in the sense that like, just because your business is mirrors, doesn't mean you can't, you know, highlight something that's important to you with an ad that's a little bit different. And your mirror is just the, in this case, the medium, it's kind of cool, but, uh, but like you can associate your product with something that's important to you. Um, and, and, and it will still benefit your product. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. So maybe think creatively about these kinds of things. Maybe it was something, you know, like in your childhood, or maybe it's something in your journey if you're an entrepreneur. Okay, so our next piece is also with Adweek, and it is about 
an anti-smoking campaign. We still need these? Yes. Interesting. Yes, because actually um, this particular rural community uh, in Florida, their smoking rates are 33, 33% higher than the entire rest of the state. Wow. Yeah. So Don't get me wrong. Like I'm not like adamantly against smoking it's just the habit is sure yeah in canada certainly we have different rules and regulations that have made it easier for people to quit or not start to begin with uh in the states it's a li- little bit more okay. accessible than there it is go. here as well um so of course uh, many people know that smoking's bad anybody who has ever smoked including myself many years ago uh you know you'd see these psas that would come out the the public service announcement saying you know it's expensive it costs you money quit it's bad your kids are you know you're a bad parent you're a bad mentor you're a bad role model bad 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 no smoking period um this however campaign really looked at it and said listen people who smoke don't necessarily want to smoke um and they definitely know the ramifications of smoking yep right everyone does everyone does so these instead of preaching those typical messages um the ads interview actual smokers who say why they want to quit and they are these real life vignettes that introduce us to smokers like one one ad per smoker um, most of them are, you know, a working parent who's under daily financial stress, who admit, you know, they're tired of the physical and financial toll of smoking. One quote that one of them said was, I'm tired of not being able to breathe. I'm tired of wasting my own money on cigarettes. Um, I don't want to smoke because I don't want to be like my dad. I don't want to be in a wheelchair with an oxygen machine behind me. I want to be there with my children, my grandchildren. And, and they're like real life people who are, I wouldn't say hardened, but they're, they're, they get it, right? Yeah, right? And these stories speak to those bigger long-term dreams instead of lecturing and giving scare tactics to people. Um, and, and it's got emotive creative um, that's respectful of smokers because it's not some public health official saying thou shalt not and you are a bad person because you smoke. These are coming from smokers to smokers. So it's respectful but still getting that message out, right? So it goes back to, you know, very similar to what we were saying with the last campaign, you know, you can have a cause, but you need it needs to come from a place of sincerity and and changing up how you're delivering that message. If I can draw a parallel between all of the articles we've covered here today, it would be stories. And, yeah. I, and I really do think that that is a, it's always been there. We all, everyone likes a good story. But I also think that uh, in ads, we want stories. We want a, a story to be told to us, whether it's the story of the founder with the mirrors or whether it's a story of someone I can relate to, like these no smoking ads. You, you want to listen to a story. And so if you're a small business, it doesn't have to be your story. It can be almost any story, but relevant to what you're doing. And, and it's, a, it's definitely a trend in ads definitely yeah and these ones are longer than typical you know your typical 30 second spot these right. are two minutes two and a half minutes long uh so th- it really gives you the opportunity to hear that story to feel an emotional connection to the um and the can, character the lead person and i can totally see a mother sending it to her son or a friend sending it over to another friend saying this kind of sounds like you yeah or this is me or this is me and i've never been able to put words to exactly, it exactly yeah you know that's uh, helpful yeah, yeah. So you will be able to see, we'll put this all up on uh, in the links to the show notes at the, um, the marketingpodcast.ca. I was going to say ad week because this was another <laughs> ad week piece. Um, the marketingpodcast.ca will have links to, uh, to all the articles that we're talking about today where you can see um, each of the videos, each of the commercials that, uh, that we're talking about and, and weigh in and let us know your thoughts as to you know, whether or not you would be compelled to, to listen and to, to buy and to engage with these brands. Is it time for our favorite things? It is. We still don't have music. Nope. Da-da-da. I'll work on that. Yeah. I'll beatbox or something. <laughs> so our favorite things, just for those of you who are maybe just joining us, Brendan and I have a lot of tools in our toolkit, if you will, that uh, help us do the work that we do through, uh, through our agency. And we like to share that, take a moment to talk about a particular tool, what we use it for and how we use it. This time around, we're talking about Trello. Trello. Yeah, Taco from Trello. 
is the spokesman. It's f- I don't even know where dog. the name comes from talking about stories, right? Like, I don't know right. how they came up with Trello. I just wish Taco would stop showing up in my inbox. <laughs> so Taco's their, like, mascot dog. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's like Chihuahua or something. Yeah. Talk about breaking stereotypes. Basically, Trello is your to-do list on steroids. So if you've ever used any to-do list application, Trello's kind of like that, except it lets you create boards and put lists on boards and then put items on lists. And then you can like put due dates and checklists and discussions and you can have multiple people on the board and they can all see the lists and you can move the cards around. They you can call color them, them categorize them. Color them, categorize them. And to give you a sense, every marketing podcast episode has its own list with a different card for everything we talk about. Um, and then show notes and all and the important there are information. There in it. Yeah. And, uh, and I literally have it open right now. I'm looking at it. Yeah, and I look at it, I see it, you know, if you were to put a whole bunch of post-it notes in a, in a row, right? On the like, wall. And columns and rows. Yeah. And it's like, okay, this is this is episode 30 and everything going straight down from that are the things that we're talking about in episode 30, episode 31, it's straight down. Except it's much more uh, efficient than post-it notes. You can archive the stuff, you can tag other people in it um, when there's like an action. I mean, you can do to-do lists right within those cards. Yep. So it's, it's a really... And it's free. And well, it has a free, free tier. Yeah, the free tier is great. Um, you can run multiple multiple boards. So we have one for the marketing podcast that Brennan just is uh, looking at. But we also, I have a personal one that just has my kind of to-do list of what I want to get done Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Have we done IFT already? No. That's what favorite thing? No. So I this is like a teaser, but it also integrates with IFT, which lets you automate stuff. So that's the teaser for when we do IFT. Okay. That's a favorite thing because okay. it's definitely a favorite thing. It is a favorite thing yeah. for sure. Yeah. So that's that's Trello and that's our episode. Thanks, guys, for listening. We really appreciate you on episode 31 for joining us, whether you're joining us for the first time. I am dancing. You can't see it. Or you've listened to all 31. He's dancing poorly. That's an amazing dance. I doubt your abilities now when it comes to musicians. Like, there's no rhythm there. Wait for it. (laughs) Uh, So thank you for being along with us so far. And tell your friends, listen, subscribe, download. We're in the Apple Store, the Google Play Store. Search Acorn 30 who is a sponsor of the podcast, which is our agency. There you go. For the Marketing Podcast, I'm Heather Watson. And I'm Brendan Quigley. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 